Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday, the 10th of June. Lovely to be back with you again. And um, I had a bit of information this week that um, was, was really uh, a lovely surprise. And that is that we have some younger viewers who are tuning in to uh, listen to morning prayer each morning. A little birdie told me, you might recognise my Easter chick is making the reappearance. So it's really good to have you with us and great that you're enjoying joining in with us in morning prayer. So let's begin. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings, that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet. The sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so, the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm today uh, is Psalm 119, verses 1 to 32. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Blessed are those whose way is pure, who walk in the law of the land of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. Those who do no wickedness, but walk in his ways. You, O Lord, have charged that we should diligently keep your commandments. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then should I not be put to shame, because I have regard for all your commandments. I will thank you with my unfeigned heart, when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes, oh forsake me not utterly. How shall young people cleanse their way, to keep themselves according to your word? With my whole heart have I sought you, Oh, let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words, I hidden, your words have I hidden within my heart, that I should not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, O teach me your statutes. With my lips have I been telling of all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your testimonies than in all manner of riches. I will mediate on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. O oh, do God to your servant that I may live, and as shall I keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger upon earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with fervent longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the arrogant. 
Cursed are those who stray from your commandments. Turn from me, shame and rebuke, for I have kept your testimonies. Rulers also sit and speak against me, but your servant me meditates on your statutes. For your testimonies are my delight, they are my faithful counsellors. My soul cleaves to the dust, O oh, give me life according to your word. I have acknowledged my ways and you have answered me. O oh, teach me your statutes, make me understand the way of your commandments, and so shall I meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away in tears of sorrow, raise me up according to your word. Take from me the way of falsehood, be gracious to me through your law. I have chosen the way of truth, and your judgments have I laid before me. I hold fast to your testimonies, O Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments, when you have set my heart at liberty. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Faithful God, let your word be the treasure of our hearts, that we may delight in your truth and walk in the glorious liberty of your Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So each morning we read, uh, well there are two uh, set scripture readings, one from the Old Testament and one from the New. We're going to read the one from the New Testament today, uh, but if you like to follow both readings for today, then the Old Testament reading is Joshua chapter 8 verses 1 to 29. So if you wanted to pause uh, this video now and um, read that for yourselves, and then we'll come back together and we'll, uh, we'll read the canticle. Okay, so our canticle for today. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy to our God, who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy to our God, who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to my fruitless. It will not return to me fruitless. But it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. And as I said, we are going to read um, the New Testament reading today, and I'm going to read today from the International Children's Bible. So it's Luke chapter 11 beginning to read at verse 1. Jesus teaches about prayer. Once Jesus was pray, praying in a place, when he had finished, one of his followers said to him, John taught his followers how to pray. Lord, please teach us how to pray too. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, we pray that your name will always be kept holy. We pray that your kingdom will come. Give us the food we need for each day. Forgive us the sins we have done because we forgive every person who has done wrong to us. And do not cause us to be tested. Then Jesus said to them, 
Suppose one of you went to your friend's house at midnight and said to him, A friend of mine has come into town to visit me, but I have nothing for him to eat. Please lend me three loaves of bread. Your friend inside the house answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked. My children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you the bread now. I tell you, perhaps friendship is not enough to make him get out get up to give you the bread. But he will surely get up to give you what you need if you continue to ask. So I tell you, continue to ask, and God will give to you. Continue to search, and you will find. Continue to knock, and the door will be open for you. Yes, if a person continues asking, he will receive. If he continues searching, he will find. And if he continues knocking, the door will open for him. What would you fathers do if your son asks you for a fish? Would any of you give him a snake? Or if your son asks for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? Even though you are bad, you know how to give good things to your children. So surely your heavenly father knows how to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. This is the word of the Lord. So I read on uh, a bit further in that chapter, um, into verse 12 and 13, um, and really reflecting on those words today and in this time that we find ourselves in, it's very important to realise that we should be praying for what people need in our community, in our family, amongst our friends. But we shouldn't always expect God to answer straight away or in the way that we expect him to. Prayers are often surprisingly answered. But first and foremost, we should keep praying. On our lich gates in front of our church, there are some big words that say, try praying. And for those perhaps who have uh, stumbled across morning prayer um, for the first time or um, are, are a regular visitor even, we may forget that prayer is something to continually do. It's a conversation with God throughout the day. And whilst our time on our knees or by our bedsides is important, having that focused time to pray to God. Equally important are those times when we we find ourselves thinking to thinking about the heavens and the answers that God would give to a situation that we find ourselves in. So try praying. Try praying every day. Try praying all day. Amen. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with your glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray to you now, our Sovereign Lord. We ask you to be with us in the day ahead to guide our thoughts and be with us in our actions and our words. May we be thoughtful, may we be kind and may we stop and pray when we see others who need your guidance. Father, we pray for this world, 
this world that is struggling. Struggling to come to terms with the effects of this virus and the way that it has turned our lives upside down. We pray for this world that struggles to understand the, the underlying racism in this land. May we be one family, one world family of brothers and sisters where colour and race do not matter. Where everyone is equal under the sight of God. And Lord, we pray for our church at this time. We pray that finances may may be bountiful, that the resources we need to carry out your work each day will be there. We pray for those in leadership role in our church. Pray for those who are tired and weary. And we pray, Lord, that we all may have patience with one another and understanding that things may have to be different maybe for a while, maybe forever, but that, Lord, your guiding hand is in all these plans and that you will have uh, dominion over all of those decisions that must be made and are made. Father, we pray at this time for schools as they welcome more children back. We pray that you will keep them safe. Pray that you will be with school leaders to make the right decisions to keep children and their families safe. We pray for social services, those who work with the most vulnerable people in our society, that they may have the strength and, and the, the courage and the bravery to make bold decisions when they're needed, so that the right help will meet the right people. Father, we pray for all those who work in the criminal justice system. Pray for those who work in prisons. We pray for those who work in their probation service. We pray for those who are working in courts in this land. We particularly pray for those who find themselves in different circumstances because of the COVID-19 crisis. Maybe their, their case may be heard through video court. Maybe they have to wait longer to appear in court to find out what the, that judgment would be. And we ask all those who find themselves incarcerated or who have been uh, imprisoned because of their beliefs. We are so lucky in this land to be able to have free speech to say what we believe and it's one of those things that we hold dear in this place. But for so many, just to open a Bible and talk and read and be with a, a fellowship of Christian people is against the law. And so they risk the retribution that may come from being found out. And yet boldly, they pray and they continue to worship you, Lord, we thank you for that courage of our brothers and sisters in those lands. We pray, Lord, for agencies across the world bringing respite, care and relief to those people who are suffering, whether it be because of war or famine or natural disaster. Thank you that they have put themselves forward to do this dangerous job. Once again, may our generosity be so fruitful that there are bountiful resources for these aid agencies to use. Finally, Lord, we bring before you all those people who find themselves impoverished at this time, who are struggling to make ends meet. Thank you for the service of those who man and work in food banks.
to make sure that people are not hungry. And we pray for the homeless, those people who find themselves with no place to sleep at night. Once again, Lord, may our gener generosity be bountiful so that those people working with these Vulnerable people will have the resources they need so that everyone has what they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, my young friend that Gilberti has told me all about is going to conclude and say um, cheerio for us today. So I'll just finish with the words of the conclusion and um, then I'll leave it up to her to say, have a nice day today. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to morning prayer. Hold my hand, God. Lead the way. Help me be good every day let me know what's wrong and right keep me safe day and night let me know what you have planned lead the way god hold my hand amen keep safe keep in prayer and in contact have a good day bye i'm one of the leadership team here in the parish of rayleigh with everyone so isolated at the moment, we thought it would be good to connect with others in the community online. And so we'll be running a course where everyone watches a short film episode about questions around the Christian faith and then chats about it together online. It's called Alpha. Alpha is a great opportunity to explore the big questions of life and to examine the claims of Christianity in a fun, non-pressurised environment. Our online Alpha is starting on Wednesday, June the 10th at 7.30 in the evening and it runs weekly after that. We'll be using a Zoom to run the course and each of the evening sessions will last no more than 90 minutes. So who is Alpha for? Well, Alpha is for anyone who wants to find out more about the Christian faith and what its relevance is to our daily lives. It's a safe environment in which to look together at the really important questions about who we are and why we are here. You may never have stepped inside the door of a church or you may have been involved with the church all of your life. Either way, Alpha is for you. Or maybe you have a friend or a family member who you'd like to invite to join you on Alpha. So why not do that and come along with them? To register for our online Alpha that starts on Wednesday, June the 10th, all you need to do is send an email to Tracy Marlow at this address, tracy.marlow at parishofrayleigh.com. 
www.ghostsofthecross.org.uk That's all for now. So let me just leave you with a brief testimony from someone who's completed Alpha recently and then a short trailer that will give you the flavour of the course. Have you got questions about life? What's the real meaning in life? What are we all here for? Is there a God? And if there is, what does that mean? If so, why not try Alpha? Alpha is a safe place for you to be able to explore these questions further, to chat with a group of people about the questions that we often find asking ourselves. I tried Alpha over five years ago now. I didn't get all of the answers that I was looking for, but I certainly was in a safe place where I was able to chat these through and talk about them further. I'm so glad that I joined that Alpha group and I recommend that you do too. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, we'd be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning.